This video is sponsored by Morning Brew. The Messages app for your iPhone. You know it, you use it, you probably don't think there's much to discuss about it, but you might be surprised to know that there are a load of hints and tips that can make your experience of this app even better. So in this video, I'm gonna share some with you. Quick thing to point out, I'm using iOS 15, but I've also got the final beta of iOS 16 installed on one of my phones. And with the release of that right around the corner, I will also take a few moments in this video to point out all of the new features and changes that are coming with iOS 16 to make sure that you're up to date no matter what. Okay, let's get into it. Unless this is your first time sending a message, I'm sure you already know how to do it. But in the interest of absolute clarity, let's just confirm that to send a message, you type what you want to say in here and tap this little button to send it. Tap the button and off it goes. A nice feature you might not be aware of, however, is sending a message effect. Instead of tapping the send button, press and hold, and you'll get these options. The effects are broadly broken down into bubble and screen, and you can preview each of them by tapping on them in the case of the bubble effects or swiping through them on the screen effects. Basically, whatever you see at your end, your recipient is gonna see at their end. Although I should caveat that by mentioning that this is in the case of both you and the message recipient being on iPhones. If your recipient is on Android, some message features that we talk about today, this one included, I believe, won't work for them. Before we continue, a very quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Morning Brew. My morning routine is typically waking up around seven, making a coffee, then relaxing in my favorite living room chair to catch up on the latest edition of Morning Brew, a free daily newsletter that takes all of the important news of the day and condenses it down into an easy to read and above all enjoyable format. I used to get a lot of my news from social media, but it's so easy to fall into a hole of negativity and endless scrolling, which isn't exactly a great way to start your day. Morning Brew takes important, but let's be honest, pretty dry subjects like business, finance, and tech, and reports them in a witty, relevant, and informative format, getting you up to speed with everything you need to know in just five minutes. Like this insane photos of revelers trying to get home after Burning Man, some of whom claim it took them over 13 hours to leave the grounds while contending with scorching heat and empty gas stations. I've had some pretty bad journeys in my time, but that's next level. Morning Brew is completely free and takes about 15 seconds to subscribe, so there really is no reason not to if you're interested in business, tech, or finance. Sign up to Morning Brew for free using the link in the description, and thanks again to Morning Brew for sponsoring this video. There is a bar directly above the keyboard and directly below the message composition box with a number of buttons in. You can toggle the visibility of this bar on and off using this button here. Let me show you what all these buttons do. The Photos button will take you quickly into your own photo library, where you can of course tap on a photo or video and add it to your message. The App Store button will take you to a very focused part of the App Store. These are all apps that you can access within Messages. There's all kinds of stuff in here, way too much to possibly show you everything, but you've got things like emojis, games, productivity tools, collaboration tools, for example, 8-Ball Pool is a pool game, which I'm now addicted to after downloading it for this video, where you take it in turns to play with a friend via message. Polls with friends allows you to set questions, send that question out to multiple contacts, and have them all vote on an answer. These are just two examples, there's hundreds in here. The next button is the sticker button, where you can add a range of stickers, including stickers of your own emojis, into the chat directly, or drop them onto existing messages as a kind of reaction. Then it's the Memoji button, where you can record yourself as a Memoji and drop that into the chat. Then it's the GIF library, where you can search for a suitable little video response to add to the conversation. I will say that the search library here isn't as good as other messaging apps that I've used, but it works. Next up is music, where an Apple Music integration allows you to send suggestions of music to the other person. Then fitness, which appears to be nothing more than an animated image library, but related to fitness. And then finally, digital touch. This is probably the most interesting out of all the options, although a little bit faddy. You can do things like draw little animations with your finger or hold two fingers down to send a heartbeat to the other person. If you keep scrolling, there are other integrations related to apps that you've downloaded. Some of these are simply image libraries. Some of them are actually pretty cool and offer useful functionality, but with there being tens of thousands of apps out there, you'll need to explore these for yourself. Tap on the buttons, see what you can do. The default for sending a message is of course to type a message in, although like everything else in iOS, you can also dictate a message. You would do that by tapping the little microphone button. The position of this will vary depending on your phone, but this is basically the dictation tool. 
this icon, the little waveform icon is your voice recorder, which is a nice feature for quickly capturing a voice note and sending that. I use this quite often if I'm out and about and typing a message isn't really feasible or if I've got something particularly lengthy that I wanna to convey to the other person. If someone sends you multiple photos in a message, they will show like this. If you tap this icon, you can then view the photos in a more structured grid format, but otherwise you can swipe with your finger to kind of swipe through the stack of images. If you then tap on an individual image, it will go full screen. And if you tap on this icon down at the bottom right, you can download the image into your own photo library. Tapping on this button will allow you to react to an individual photo, things like the thumbs up, love heart, and the sender will get informed of this. You can download all of the photos to your own photo library in one go by tapping this button, which is of course useful if you've been sent a few all at the same time. Oh, and something to point out regarding photos. When you take a photo on your iPhone, your phone stores EXIF data, which includes things like the photo's name, the date that it was captured, the device and lens that the photo was captured on, as well as very detailed photo composition data, the aperture, ISO, that kind of thing. That data is transferred when you send a photo via messages. In other words, the receiver can save the photo to their own photo library and view that information about the photo. Most of this won't be of concern to most people, but it is worth knowing that your exact location information might also be captured as part of that EXIF data and would therefore also be sent. If you don't want this to happen, you've got a couple of options. You can either switch off location information entirely by going to settings, then privacy, then location services, then camera, and switching precise location off, possibly even changing location access to never. Unfortunately, this will also take away your ability to store this information for yourself, and it can be nice to see location detail when you're browsing through your own photos. The other alternative is to open a photo before you send it, tap the I button, scroll down to the map, tap adjust, and choose no location. The only issue with this is that you've got to do this for every photo that you want to send, which can be a bit laborious. This feels like a bit of an oversight by Apple. Hopefully they'll find a better solution for this in the future. There are a couple of really useful functions for helping you to manage your messages. First up, you can filter messages from known senders. In other words, people in your contacts list and unknown senders, basically everyone else. If you get a lot of spam text, this is obviously gonna be useful to you. To do this, head into settings, then messages, then under message filtering, toggle filter unknown senders on. Then back in the messages app, you'll see that you have a first screen giving you the option of viewing all messages, messages from known senders or messages from unknown senders. You can also pin messages to the top of the messages app and you would do this by swiping from left to right and then tapping the pin icon. That contacts image will now show at the top of the screen and you can do this for up to nine message threads, I believe. Swiping the other way, right to left, will allow you to mute the chat or delete the chat. If you're enjoying the content here, why not consider signing up to my newsletter, The Proper Weekly? I share some tech news from the week, a behind the scenes of what's happening here on the channel, as well as a tip for a piece of tech from the Apple ecosystem. The newsletter goes out each Friday, is free to join, and the link to sign up is in the description of this video. When in a message, the profile picture of the person you're talking with will be visible at the top of the screen. If you tap on that, you'll be taken to that person's contact card within messages. Here you can call or FaceTime them, email them if you have an email address for them and view their info. You can send them your current location, which is obviously useful if it's a trusted contact and you want them to know where you are. Perhaps because they're trying to drive to your house, you'll essentially send your location on a map to them and that person can then tap on the map that they receive and use Apple Maps to navigate right to you. Share my location also allows you to share your location with that person. And there is a difference to the previous option. Sending your location sends that person a map of where you are at the moment that you hit send. Sharing your location allows someone to track you for a period of time using the Find My app. So perhaps you're going out to meet someone and you'd like a friend or family member to be able to keep an eye on where you are for the night. You could tap on this and then choose share until end of day. A bit further down, you have some more options for the specific chat. And then below that, you have the media that's been shared in your chat, broken down into photos and videos, then links and then locations would be underneath that. The final thing to show you here is that if we jump back to the message thread itself, if the contact you're speaking with is able to be FaceTime called, you can do that by tapping the FaceTime icon up here at the top right. 
You can't really do fonts in messages as such, but you can use something called fancy text, which is kind of like having access to some different fonts. To do this, search the web for a fancy text generator. And when you find one, input the text you'd like to send in the relevant part of that website, then choose copy. Then paste into the messaging field, and you can see that the message you sent will be sent in fancy text. You can also create subject lines for your messages, but you need to enable a setting for this. Head into settings, then messages, scroll down and toggle on show subject field. Then back in the message view, you can see that you can add a subject line prior to sending a message, which can be in bold. Also another useful feature in messages that requires a setting is being able to tap on a message and have Siri speak it to you. In order for this to work, we need to go to settings, then accessibility, then spoken content, and ensure that speak selection is toggled on. Then back on a message, tap and hold on the message for a moment and choose speak. SMS short message service is a text messaging service component of most telephone, internet, and mobile device systems. Actually, just to cover off the other options within the contextual menu that you can access when you tap and hold, you can also translate messages here and reply to specific messages, which then shows with this line connecting the reply to your message. It obviously makes it much easier to know what someone's referring to in a busy message thread. From the other person's perspective, it's even better. They can see that a reply to their message has been received. And if they tap on the notification of this, they can view just the message and reply in its own thread, which is great for focusing. Finally, when composing a message, tilt your phone on its side and you'll have access to this button. You can handwrite a message to the other person. So the last thing to discuss then is iOS 16. This tutorial has been written and recorded using iOS 15, but it's now only a couple of days until the new iOS launches as I make this. Chances are by the time you watch this, iOS 16 will already be out, and I've been using the beta to ensure that I'm able to give you up-to-date information. There aren't huge updates to messages in this new iOS update, but there are a few minor updates which I'll now show you. First up, when you delete a message thread now in iOS 16, rather than that thread being gone forever immediately, it now moves to a recently deleted folder in iOS 16, meaning that for a limited amount of time, you can undelete the thread if you wish. You can also now mark a message as unread, even after you've read it. I don't know whether this will impact a read receipt that your recipient gets, by the way. I would assume it doesn't. I think this is just more to give you greater control over managing your unread messages, a bit like with email. To do this, tap and hold on the message thread from the messages tab and choose mark as unread. The other two changes are related to messages that you've sent, although be aware that both you and your recipient will need to be using iMessage and specifically iOS 16 or later for these to work properly. You can now unsend a message, essentially deleting it from both your phone and your recipient's phone. To do this on a message that you've just sent, press and hold for a moment to get the contextual menu, then choose undo send. The other option is to instead choose edit, which then allows you to edit the text that you've just sent rather than deleting it entirely. So there you go, a thorough walkthrough of the Messages app for the iPhone, including the changes coming in iOS 16. How about you? Do you use Messages? If yes, anything that I've missed that I should have mentioned? Or if you don't use Messages, what do you use and why? Drop me a comment and let's talk about it. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.